All right, cadets, Dr. Cook here again. In this video lecture, we're going to be talking about phases and how we can phase our operations. Now, when we're talking about phasing, all right, you can do this different ways. How many phases in your operations based on how many do you need to make it clear, to control your troops, and to keep everything synchronized that needs to happen in the battle? All right. Now, Doctrine has some guidance, and they'll talk about different kinds of phases. And depending on the scale of your mission, all right, if you're at a battalion level versus a platoon level, you might need some more detail or separate some things in different phases, or they might be combined in certain ways. Now, our recommendation for MS-200 is to use a five-phase attack model, all right, which is shown here. So our phase one being our preparation and movement to the objective, all right? Phase two is our recon reconnaissance of the objective. Phase three, we want to set conditions, also known as isolating the objective. All right, we don't have to actually doctrinally isolate it all the time, but we have to at least set conditions for what's gonna happen. And then four is where the actual, uh, we start pulling triggers, all right? And that's the assault on the objective, right? Everything before then we hope we got through without having to fire any shots and we weren't detected. And then phase four is where we're actually assaulting the objective. But that's not where things end because we have a phase five and we want to talk about either transitioning to the next mission or consolidating ourselves on the objective. And that's all about reorganizing for what comes next. All right, we've got to finish things out. We don't just hit the LOA and stop. We have to be prepared uh, to go into the next thing, whether that's defending our position that we've now taken or we're moving off onto a follow on mission. All right, now, actions before the objective. All right, here we're talking about in our model, phases one, two, and three, movement, reconnaissance, and isolation uh, or setting conditions. All right, now, during that time, we should be thinking about how are, what are we going to do when we have contact with the enemy? And I want to make sure everyone understands that contact doesn't necessarily mean that we've gotten into a firefight or they're shooting at us or we're shooting at them. All right, there's multiple forms of contact. We're going to have direct contact with the enemy. We're going to have indirect contact. Uh, fires coming in. We have non-hostile civilian contact. All right, what are you going to do if you're trying to make your movement to the objective, or you're sending out your leader's recon, and you're trying to sneak up, and some goat herder comes by just because he's doing his thing, going about his day, right? Or some kids on their way to school decide to cut through the woods and uh, go apple picking on their way to school. And you're, you know, you're laying there in the prone with binoculars trying to get eyes on an objective target house. All right. What are you going to do about that? Those aren't hostiles. They're not trying to mess with you. But what does that mean for your mission? Does it compromise you or not? And what reactions are you going to have to that during those different phases of the mission? All right. How are you going to deal with obstacles? All right. We can have contact with enemy obstacles. Um, sea burn is always uh, something to be thinking about, especially as we go into high intensity conflict. What about aerial contacts? What are you going to do when you're uh, moving to the objective and there's enemy UAVs or helicopters that are flying overhead that might see you or spot you where you are? Or maybe they're looking for you. All right, we can have visual contact with the enemy. We might want that during reconnaissance. We probably do. We want to get visual contact with the enemy so we know where they are and we can scout out how are they set up with their defenses. All right, and then electronic warfare contacts. Um, is something to be considered also. So all of these, need, we need to think through it and decide during these phases, not just our primary thing, if we're going to move to the ORP, we're going to move to the assault position, we're going to put out a leader's recon, and we're going to get into support by fire, right? Like we, we need to do those things. We also have to have plans for all these what ifs and other things that might happen along the way, or how do we use them to our advantage? All right, other things to think about before uh, the objectives, all right, you should always be considering, uh, as long as you have the time, these three kinds of positions, right? So you have your support positions, your assault positions, and your security positions, all right? So support positions, like where are you going to put your support by fire, right? Uh, where can I put supporting operation elements to make sure that my mission goes well? And I do like this first bullet about make, taking consideration of that position being in such a place that it has the ability to call indirect fires for you, has good observation to provide you with that indirect fire support from its location without having to relocate, right? You don't want to put your support by fire maybe in a good spot for the machine guns to open up, but nobody can see anything clearly on the objective. They can't see the friendlies, and therefore they can never get on the radio and call in the indirect fire targets, right? 
So where do our support elements go that can facilitate that? All right, our assault position, okay, that last covered and concealed position before we actually hit the objective with the assaulting force, right? We want that as close as possible, but still with some cover and concealment, all right? Where is that gonna go? Um, and it has to have some way to get to the objective, all right? Now, maybe that means we have to make sure that that element has breaching assets with it, or at least that there's a route, there's a place to go, and we can get them there. And the last one to think about, I think a lot of people forget about is security elements, all right? And where is our security positions? Are we gonna put out a screen? How are we gonna do that um, in such a way that they'll be able to, one, give us early warning of what's going on with the enemy, protect our flanks, protect the direction that we're not watching while the rest of us are focused on the objective, but then also um, how they can help us with isolating the objective, right? So a security element that helps cut off the backside of the objective and give us early warning of any re enemy reinforcements that might come up that direction and could slow them down uh, so that they don't interfere with the main part of the operation. All right, so make sure you're thinking about that and, and what happens when not just your enemy, but some other enemy that maybe you weren't tracking come in from somewhere else. All right, that's what your security elements do for you. All right, now, actions on the objective and beyond the objective. I think this is one that hopefully you're familiar with, things you did at Camp Buckner. Um, you know, actions on the objective. We're going to go up there, we're going to shoot the enemy, and we're going we're gonna to deal with what comes after that. And, and this ends up being a lot like the battle drills. But like I said in the other lecture, remember, we are not executing a battle drill. Battle drills are for unplanned events. There's that hip pocket thing that we can just do with no planning effort, all right? We've got time, we can be more elegant and come up with a better plan that will work better for what we're trying to do if we plan, all right? So we need a plan, all right? On the objective, all right? Make sure that our way to initiate that attack phase, all right, when we actually go into assaulting the objective, is something that can't go wrong, all right? You don't need to say that, well, my plan is we're gonna get on the cell phone and I'm gonna call you up uh, or we'll have an open cell line, I'll tell you when to go, and then we have no cell service, right? That would be a bad plan, or the battery goes dead, or something like that. Pace planning is a way to handle that, all right? We'll talk more about that when we get to communications for paragraph five, all right? But really having a primary and alternate, a contingency and emergency way of getting a hold of somebody, okay? We want something to know that we will be able to initiate the attack and, and everyone will know about it, all right? We wanna make sure that we can get fires onto the objective, all right, we get direct fire onto the objective and we have local uh, support by fire in the right spot uh, to go along with our assault teams. All right, clear signals for how we're gonna lift, how we're gonna shift fires, how we're gonna cease fire, and everybody knows what they are, all right? That are, uh, we know where each other is, that are security element, we know where they are, we don't have fratricide issues, and that they're properly supporting us. The assault element is where they're supposed to do and can get its job done as fast as possible. Uh, everyone knows where the LOA is, and this is kind of our transition then into that beyond the objective that we don't just hit the LOA and then, yay, that's it, let's throw a party, right? We still have actions after that, right? That might put us into the next phase of, of our mission, that final phase, but um, we need to plan for what comes next, right? Because then we have to get into those priorities of work and uh, make sure that we've secured the objective, that we take care of EPWs, that um, we're dealing with our own casualties and resupply, prepared for counterattack, uh, whatever it goes along with that mission. All mm -hmm. right. Now, this last bullet is about your job as platoon leader is all about maintaining the tempo and keeping things moving. All right. Even when things go wrong, all right, or if they're going right, the people don't just kind of fall into a rut and, and, and ignore things. We need to keep tempo up and moving, and the next thing happens as we go through all of our events and get our priorities done. All right, now, that beyond the objective part, make sure that you rehearse getting off the objective, all right? Include that in your rehearsals. Don't just rehearse getting there, rehearse actions on the objective, rehearse actions on the objective again, LOA, LOA, all right, let's go home, right? Because that's what's gonna happen then is you're gonna hit the LOA during the real mission and everybody's gonna be like, okay, now what? And they're just gonna be standing around, all right? You need to rapidly get into that next phase. Once you get to the LOA and you've accomplished your mission on the objective, you need to rapidly go into what comes next, 
All right. Are you trying to exfil off of there? Are you transitioning to a follow on mission somewhere else? What direction is that? Where are you going? How are you getting off the objective that you just hit and the enemy knows exactly where it is? That was the enemy's position. All right. You think the their higher headquarters doesn't have the exact grid location to call in an indirect fire strike? You better get off of that thing as fast as you can if that's your plan. Now, if you're there to hold that piece of train, you better get ready for a counterattack, all right? You got to set that defense so you can actually hold it. We can't just take it. We took it. We're all standing around at the LOA. Now let's go sit down and wait for the LT to tell us what to do and then decide what happens next. No, have a plan. Have it rehearsed. Everybody knows where they're going, which squads are covering which uh, portions of the perimeter to defend that thing. All right, have a plan for that. Make sure you're rehearsing. Everyone knows what it is. It should be well articulated in your plan, in your op order, and in your rehearsals. If. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about phase lines and how to use them. So we've got phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five. And we kind of see that, hey, phase one, we're in the assembly area. We're going to move ourselves. We'll get to the ORP, send out a recon. All right, all these things happen. And then we can go through and define phase lines between them. So our first phase line might be the line of departure, okay? And then we got a phase line Bravo, a Charlie, a Delta, okay? So our phase lines should define when we transition from one phase to the next. And we can use those on our graphics to help define things, all right? So when we're in movement and we might want our squad to march in column, right? Everyone knows that from the LD to phase line Bravo, we're going to be in column and that our casualty of evac plan is a certain thing and all that changes, okay? If there's some reason that we need to change those controls, we can add another phase line in. All right, this is just an example then of showing that all the way through, uh, we've got our phases drawn across top, phase one, two, three, isolate, four, actions on, and then phase five after. You can see we've drawn out a quick sketch of all the movements and what's going on with the units and uh, put in our phase lines drawn between them to separate them. All right, that's it for this lecture. Uh, see you in class.